Okay, let's talk about the New York Regents Algebra 1 exam. So if you're watching this video, I'm assuming you're a high school student in New York. Uh, obviously, uh, you're interested in the Regents Algebra 1 exam, so I'm just going to assume you are uh, taking Algebra 1, and it's this time of year where the Regents exams is going to be given, usually, obviously, towards the end of the years. Now, the Regents exams have been around for uh, decades in New York, so... Uh, it's nothing new, and other states have similar tests, but they're very, very important. you got to take them uh, serious. Uh, don't know exactly for New York if it's um, how it affects your graduation uh, requirements, the regents, uh, or the credit you get. Um, but nevertheless, it's a very, very important exam, and uh, you should take it uh, very seriously. So we're going to take a look at a practice problem here in a second something that you should be able to handle pretty easily if you expect to do well on this uh, exam. But let me introduce myself uh, before we get going any further. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabba Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and uh, over several, several years, I've constructed many, many courses to include, um, many, many uh, online math courses to include a test prep course for uh, the New York Regents Algebra 1. Very, very comprehensive. I'm gonna, I'm gonna leave a link to that in the description of this video if that's something you wanna check out. But let's go ahead and take a look at this problem here. And let me explain to you what uh, what's kinda of going on and you might wanna pause and see, pause the video and see if you can uh, figure it out. Okay, so this is a quadratic, a graph of a quadratic function, okay? You can see the graph is kinda of doing something here. It's bouncing at three on the x-axis, okay? So let me go ahead and just write this down. So this is a quadratic function. Here's its graph, okay? And it's bouncing at three. So what I'd like you to do is to write a, uh, an equation that would represent this quadratic function, this quadratic equation. All right, so if you wanna go ahead and pause the video, of course, I'm gonna answer this. Um, you know, go ahead and pause and just think of, pause the video, think about it. Like, you know, what do you know about quadratic equations, quadratic functions? Uh, even though it, what you're thinking about may not specifically help you answer this, quadratic equations, quadratic functions are a huge part of Algebra 1. So something that you um, definitely need to know a lot about. Okay, so hopefully you uh, tried the problem. Even if you couldn't figure it out or if you're lost, no problem. Just, again, I want you to just to think about quadratic functions, quadratic equations. So what are some basic things that we um, know about quadratic functions? Now, of course, I'm not going to turn this into a full lesson on quadratic functions, quadratic equations. That's just that's just too much information. Okay, but we do know that quadratic equations are polynomials, okay? And specifically, they're second-degree polynomials, okay? Meaning that the highest power is like x squared, right? This is the degree of the polynomial. And this description, polynomial, is not a, it's not a trivial description. It's very, very important, okay, that we understand what polynomials are because there's things in math that look like polynomials that are not polynomials. So we got to be able to identify, hey, what are polynomials and then what is a second degree of polynomial? That's what a quadratic function is, okay? So once we know we're dealing with the second degree polynomial function, polynomial equation, what are the things do we know about uh, uh, quadratic equations? Well, we know that they have two solutions. They always have two solutions, and they can be either real numbers, two real numbers, or two complex numbers, okay? Now, if you haven't studied uh, complex or imaginary roots, you will definitely be studying that, but it's likely that you've been at least introduced to the concept of uh, that, okay? All right, now what else do we know about quadratic equations? Well, you know that the graphs are parabolas, okay, and should be able to, you know, graph parabolas, tell me where the vertex is, et cetera, et cetera. And one thing that you hopefully know, and you definitely need to know, is the connection between the graph and quadratic functions. So basically, if these quadratic equations that you're trying to solve have two real roots, okay, you'll be able to identify that um, visually by uh, looking at what's going on with the graph. So for example, if you have a quadratic equation that is crossing through, let's say, negative 9, 
and negative 5, well, these here, okay, these x-intercepts, these points where the graph crosses the x-axis, are in fact the solutions, okay, to the quadratic equation, okay, represented by this graph. Now, we call these points the solutions. They're also known as roots or zeros, okay, so... It's kind of just the different uh, mathematical words we use to describe the solutions to quadratic functions. So this particular one, it's kind of interesting. You're saying, well, what's going on here? I don't see this graph crossing through. Okay, it's kind of bouncing at this point. Well, that means that this is a double root. Okay, this means that this quadratic equation has the solutions. Uh, one solution is 3. And the other solution is also 3. Okay, so over here, for example, one solution here is negative 9. And the other solution to this quadratic uh, equation represented by this graph would be negative 5. Now, when we know what the solutions are, okay, we can write something called linear factors to represent uh, what's going on. So I'm going to go ahead and just write that now. So this would be x minus 3 times x minus 3 is equal to 0. Now, uh, at this point, some of you might be kind of lost, okay? Well, um, again, this is kind of a pop quiz. I don't want to turn this into a, a full lesson. But how do we get from here to here? Well, this when you have solutions, you can represent them using linear factors. In other words, if I had this equation, I said, well, solve this you should uh, understand that I can set each one of these factors equal to zero because it's this thing times this thing is equal to zero. That means this or this or both of these things, okay, these factors uh, are zero. This is something called the zero product property. It's a very, very common way to solve uh, equations, uh, especially polynomial equations uh, in algebra. So what we can do, we would just set each factor equal to zero like so, and we would solve, and we would get x is equal to 3, and x is equal to 3. And you're saying, well, it's the same answer. You know, it's like, oh, is this just one root repeated? Well, no, it's a double root, okay? We're still talking about two solutions, but that's what's going on here. So that's a double root. Now, if you had, let's say, your parabola visually like so above the x-axis, what would that indicate? Okay, so here's another little pop quiz for you. Well, it's not crossing through the x-axis. So this here, this uh, quadratic equation represented by this graph has no real roots. Okay. So this would have two imaginary or two complex roots. Okay. So again, a lot that we can discuss here. Quadratic equations are extremely important uh, in Algebra 1. You really get into them uh, big time at the Algebra 1 level, and they do not go away because uh, later uh, in Algebra 2 or and beyond, you study generally how to solve uh, higher degree of polynomial equations. And a big part of the foundation how we do that is your understanding and how to deal with quadratic equations, quadratic functions. Okay, so let's go ahead and wrap up this video. Again, uh, I'm going to go ahead and leave a link to my New York Regents Algebra 1 prep course in the description of this video. It's extremely comprehensive, uh, and if you like my teaching style, you'll have more than uh, you can imagine in terms of study material. Um, if you enjoyed this video, definitely appreciate um, a thumbs up. And if you're new to my channel, uh, I've been posting on YouTube for the time of this video for 12 plus years. So this is one of my passions is just throwing out uh, math information I think could help people. So hopefully you consider subscribing. I'm posting all the time. Also, on my channel, there's a lot of uh, uh, videos that I've done that will help you out uh, at the Algebra 1 level. And give me your feedback. How are you doing in school? Uh, are you um, back in the classroom at this time? Are you uh, online? You know, how's it going? Do you enjoy math? Any feedback is good feedback. And then again, last but not least, let me just tell you like this, okay? One, take this exam seriously. Two, even though you've done well, okay, you still, in, in Algebra 1, you still have to study, okay, for this exam. And then the third thing is, if you struggled uh, through Algebra 1, 
you could still turn it around. It's not too late. Okay, I've taught this course for several, several years. Uh, so you, you know, if you're watching this video and you've got maybe two weeks, a month, you could still do a lot to turn, uh, you know, to turn your grade around and improve, you know, how you finish the course. So, but you get, you know, you have to get, you know, uh, more committed uh, to learning math. But anyways, with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best. And uh, thank you for your time and have a great day.